Rise and shine, wild ones! It's Bernadette. I'm here with your Pick a Card Daily Tarot Reading for Sunday, October 4th. Oh, Sundays, they are governed by the crown chakra. I've got my purple headband on so I can more divinely connect to what Spirit's trying to tell me to tell y'all today. It is uh, the planetary influence is the sun, even if you're in the deep, dark, you know, winter already in your neck of the world and you got you know, snow swirling around. Remember, you can always connect to that divine light that is the sun. And it's a really interesting card that shows up today. I, you know, I know I say that every day, but I, the whole thing fascinates me. What can I tell you? Ta-da! <laughs> the alligator card has shown up today. Now, I live in Gainesville, Florida, which is Go Gators. And yesterday was the opening day of the much anticipated, are we going to have season? Are we not going to have season? Are we going to have season? Are we not going to have season? And such that it was, it was the opening day of season. And here comes along the uh, alligator with the four of cups. Now, uh, for those of you who uh, don't have it yet, don't know about it yet, I read from my own award-winning deck, the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. And it's based on the Rider weight system of tarot cards, the most traditional system. And then it marries all of the amazing, magical, mystical energies of the animal spirit, totem, power animal kingdom, okay? So <clears throat> when I see alligator come up and it's the four of cups, I know that it's going to take maybe a little bit more unpacking for someone because, you know, like all cards and like all animals, there's a tremendous amount of symbolism that goes into it. Tarot card meanings, you know, the world of spirit animal meanings, that nature of thing. But when you're talking about an energy that's as ancient as alligators, because let's face it, y'all, you're basically dealing with a dinosaur when you're talking about alligator energy. You're talking about two seemingly incongruous energies. The energy that is the wisdom of the ancients, wisdom that alligators have carried forward and forward for all these millennia. And you're also talking about the reptile brain, the amphibian brain, you know, in those realms of brains. They, they don't necessarily tend to be the most evolved, but what has been documented is they are still capable of forming obviously familial attachments, which some will just say is, is just, oh, you know, survival of the fittest and survival of the species. But there's documented evidence, um, especially I can't think of the fellow's name, but he raised an alligator or crocodile from the time it was a baby finally took it to a sanctuary and still when this fellow comes and calls this alligator a crocodile's name this thing will swim through hundreds of alligators crocodiles to get to him and then swim with him and never has caused him any harm now that's a little more risk than i would want to take but that i don't think it's an anomaly i don't think that it is misunderstanding the signs i think uh and i know i know pet uh, snake pet owners you wouldn't catch me having one but I, I really do believe, because I experienced at Mystic Jungle Sanctuary, um, I held a snake for the first time, a big giant golden ball python, beautiful. And I honestly never considered myself a reptile person. I don't, I mean, I've never been spoken to by a snake. Um, I don't come from the house of Slytherin. I don't speak that language that Harry Potter speaks. Um, but for the first time ever, this snake talked to me and it knocked me back a few paces. She really does love the snake handler, the snake wrangler that works at Mystic Jungle to take care of all their pet rescue snakes. I mean, she loves him, only him. She cannot wait for him to show. And I didn't even know who he was. He was just a guy standing there that happened to bring me the snake. I didn't know he was all that involved in her life. I didn't know whatever. And I turned around and I looked at that man and I said, she really loves you. And he got misty eyed and teary eyed and God love this man. He loves him. He loves those snakes. So before we get into the four of cups, before we get into the alligator meanings and symbolism, um, just know that even though you're dealing with ancient wisdom and you're dealing with a mind that may not be that evolved, honestly, is there anything more evolved than love? So moving ahead, when we take a look at why the page of cups would come into our life today, it is all about ideas and inspirations and creativity that are just insights that are very surprising, that are just gonna pop to life. They're gonna come when you least expect it. Kind of like the fish that's popping out of that golden chalice. It's a little bit of a surprise for everybody. Kind of like me talking to a snake for the first and only time. It was shocking to me. 
But so weird, the week after that, holy guacamole, did so much stuff happen in my life that was surprising that had to do with creativity and expansion and growth. So when, when something pops into your mind today or really for the coming week, <clears throat> or you think back on the last week, what kind of ideas popped into your head that you might have poo-pooed as, that's an outlandish idea, that's just crazy, that'll never happen. Um, I think that's not true. I think maybe it's a good call for you to let the Page of Cups do its work in your life and in your imagination and in your world. Okay, so also, even though those ideas came out of nowhere or seemingly came out of nowhere, y'all, nothing comes out of nowhere. It might be resurfacing from your childhood. It might be a download that the divine is sending you because it's time in your life to move ahead with certain things. There could be any number of reasons, but what the, what the most important thing is is not to poo-poo what's coming to you. Just go like the water element. Just go with the flow and let it unfold. Okay, so, you know, alligators originate from the Nile. It, it, it's a very, very fertile place out there. They're, I don't, God knows the things they can grow in their soil out there, mostly because it's untouched by man for all these times, but then the water, don't get me started on that whole ecology thing about gardening and fertile soil and all that. But when you take a look at how fertile that soil is. Again, really just let these ideas percolate in your mind. Let them um, get all the good nutrients and all of the good richness that your mind, the soil of your mind and your heart have to offer it and just let it grow and see what, what comes from there. When, when we take a look at <clears throat> the Page of Cups, a lot of people will um, think that it's a very male card because it, it shows up as male, but that's not always true. It doesn't show up in every deck as male. So realize that these ideas will have a masculine and a feminine energy to them. And it's important that you not sit in a place of judgment about what kind of energy is coming through for you first. Don't, don't deem it masculine or feminine. Don't deem it receptive or aggressive. Just let it be and see if those two worlds might not come together and present you with some crazy, amazing opportunities. It's a very playful card, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's a youth that's bringing great news. It, it's, it's a youth that's bringing great surprises. But I'm, you know, a woman of a certain age and I still act the fool. I still act like a kid because see what's in back of me? See how I'm decorated for Halloween? And it just gets more as we move on into Christmas and wait till Easter gets here. It's just all, you know, listen, it's the kid. So you may be being called to, again, check back with your childhood in a way that, that will become surprising to you in what you're supposed to glean or bring forward from that time. Again, don't sit in judgment. Just let it, just let it, um, just let it percolate. I'm going to use that word a lot, percolate. I don't know why. It's the word that's being told to use to me. What that tells me is there's a bunch of you out there that needed to hear the word percolate today. So there you have it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that the Page of Cups might bring in is a love that you haven't heard from in a long time. It, it, realize that that love might be circling back, might be circling back from your childhood from a much, much earlier time in your life. And that would mean a romantic love, not just the creativity or the artistry or whatever it is that, you know, that surprising insight that you're going to get. It could be an actual romantic love. So be on the lookout for that. Now, when we think about alligator as the page of cups, you're like, okay, <laughs> the page of cups is, you know, playful and it's hopeful and it's bouncy. And then alligators are, you know, they're not the most beloved animals in the world because they're dangerous. And it's not like, you know, theoretically, they're going to cuddle with you or make you, you know, go walking with you in the park. Okay. But we already know that alligators are, they're just such a big part of the, of the water element, which is all about those emotions. And in their own way, they love very deeply. I mean, alligators will slap, snap you up, roll you until you're dead, and drag you to the bottom of the water and eat you. That is a fact. It is a fact. Sorry, that's, that's nature. But as big and ferocious as they are, their moms, that feminine energy, my gosh, they're the most gentle moms. 
They carry the eggs in their mouth. When I mean, they protect them like you can't imagine. When the babies start to break open, they take those eggs and all the hatching babies in their mouth and they take them out to the water. The young ones will stay with them for almost two years until they learn all the ropes of the lakes. And, you know, listen, I'm from, I, I grew up in a place literally called Alligator Alley, y'all. I mean, there's a million of those in Florida, but right up from my house where I grew up in the trailer in the woods, no joke, right outside of Denellen and Ocala, Florida, there were these two big swamps. I mean, more like big ponds, but pretty deep on one side of the road as you were going out what we call the back way. And when it was breeding season, man, you had to just sit there for a minute with your car and you had to zoom through this because the mama gators would come rushing the bank. My Lord, there were alligators, alligators. And here in Gainesville, where I live, there's Payne's Prairie and there's alligators all over there. I mean, you can go any, any kind of time of the day or night, but especially when they're wanting to warm themselves in the sun and just see hundreds of alligators just laying around and you're like, oh my Lord, I'm in Jurassic Park. And you are kind of, but don't let alligator energy fool you, especially if they're baby alligators, which is what wanted to be depicted for the Page of Cups. It still brings that vivacity of youth, that hopefulness of youth, and it just will really string, you know, call to your heartstrings because alligators are super social creatures. They prefer to stay in groups. They navigate relationships with great success. And when you talk about all these surprising bits of artistry or surprising insights that are going to come to you, which again, this is Sunday, it's Crown Chakra Day. It may be a day, because uh, you know, Sundays are traditionally spent with family and groups, um, you know, uh, praying together, worshiping together, just hanging out and having a kombucha together, Skyping together, um, FaceTiming, whatever. There might be a big call for you today to have some kind of epiphany about your group, your flock, your tribe, your, you know, your clutch, your whatever group you like to belong to, well, whatever you like to call it. And there's going to be something really creative. And that can be, y'all, don't go crazy. It can be as much as, you know what? I think I'm going to bring orange cranberry muffins to the meeting today instead of, you know, banana walnut. And and who knows what, what memories that's going to bring for somebody or how that's going to, you know, spark their whatever. Just make them happy. And it can be something as, you know what? I've always wanted to start this charity. I'm doing it. It can be, you know what? Oh, this is so perfect, y'all. So I read for this gal a little while ago. And um, goodness, I kept saying to her, I just feel like you want to live your life out loud. You want to live your life out loud. You have something important to say and you want to say it. And I just keep seeing this stage, this theater. And she goes, well, I'm an introvert. I don't ever want to be an actor. And I said, ah, I didn't say it was about acting. I said, but how do you want to use your voice in the world? She said, well, I am a published author and I want, I said, stop right there. I said, whether you're published or not, but congratulations on being published. When you want to speak your truth out into the world, you want to tell the stories you want to tell. That means you want to live your life out loud. And she hadn't written a dang thing for her newest book. And she's got an agent. These people are waiting on this book, y'all. And she hadn't written a thing in months and months, like actually over a year. So she said, I know, I know, I just have all this other stuff going on and I really should be more disciplined. And I said, ah, la, 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 stop. I said, you're seeing this from the completely wrong perspective. She said, what do you mean? I said, look, I said, you can't rush creativity. You can't put a timestamp on artistry and you can't put a timestamp on good luck. But I don't remember who said it. But he said, yes, I absolutely believe in good luck. And the harder I work, the more good luck I have. And there is some element of that, actually a pretty big element, that's the truth. But the other truth is when you see this as a chore, when you say to yourself, I must be more disciplined so I can do this, no one wants to be under that kind of pressure. That's crap. And so, don't, so here's maybe if you could see your way to see it this way. You love writing? Absolutely, I do, she said. And my gosh, you should have seen the sincerity and authenticity. My heart ached for this woman. I wanted, I wanted to be able to pay her a paycheck so she didn't have to go to her regular job. So all she could do was sit home and write. I said, then, then even if it's 5, 10, 15 minutes a day, why don't you see your writing as a treat? A beautiful, golden, delicious nugget of time that's for you and only you. And all of your characters in your fiction 
and all of the people that will benefit and have a good time by reading this book, why don't you come to see it as that? And I bet that book gets written almost overnight. Well, there was the surprising artistry that showed up for this gal as the Four of Cups as the alligator because it never occurred to her to see it like that. And because she couldn't see it like that, wouldn't see it like that, didn't see it like that, she was behind and under more pressure and beating herself up more and more and more. And that's also where alligator comes in. You know, when they're above the water, they've just got their eyes right above the water. So they can see above and below, as above, so below. But that makes their eyesight very little gets past them. And they can see, I mean, even the incy beansiest movement in their peripheral vision, the, goodness, they can see it. And then they will move on it, whatever that means. It, it can be complicated, the energy of an alligator, because you do have the as above, so below principle coming into it. The yin, the yang, the father sky, the mother earth which is one of the reasons I say don't judge the Page of Cups as being male or female because um, you just, you, you, it's going to be a really good blending of energies that's going to be very helpful to you with this. And when, when you start talking about deep diving into emotions, y'all, I'm a triple Scorpio. That's where I live, and it's exhausting. My God, the processing, the analyzing of this emotion, that emotion, I mean, I've got to process how I feel. Do I want chocolate sorbet, you know, chocolate gelato today, or do I want mango sorbet today? And I'll stand in that dang frozen aisle, freezing my patootie off, trying to decide what I want. These days, I've just gone, I'm buying them both. And I chuck them both in my cart, and I run up. I spend a lot of time grocery shopping. Um, that's my social activity. And so don't judge. Just, just see if you can't integrate all of the things that you're seeing, know that you can breathe underwater because, because they can, or they can hold their breath long enough. Know that you'll be able to come up from air whenever you need to. An alligator is a great helpmate for all of this, for not being so hard on yourself. You know, they've got a very, very thick skin and they are apex predators in their environment. I mean, honestly, there's not much that kills an alligator. Now, crocodiles, on the other hand, hippos get them all the time. But other than stupid mankind, um, there's, oh, sorry, I love you, mankind. I do. Um, not the ones that hunt, but, uh, you know, they, they don't really have too many predators. So whatever this thing is that you're being called to create, whatever artistry is coming to you, you're, you're tough enough to do the double stuff. And it may not call for double tough stuff. You, you may not have to be all that tough. But you can survive and you can go at the long term because remember, alligators are dinosaurs, y'all. They've been around since time immemorial or memorial or whatever that word is. So if uh, alligator is coming to you as a spirit animal, and if you don't know the difference between a spirit totem and power animal, look down in the notes. The video to it is below. Man, it is time for your psychic senses to blossom uh, through lots and lots and lots of... Um, cultures, in particular very indigenous and shamanic cultures, the alligator is thought of as a deeply, deeply psychic animal, very much like snakes, because they hold that ancient wisdom and they've got that certainty about them and a strength and a fierceness that can only come with time and maturity. And, and that the natural evolution of that is the development of your psychic senses. And, you know, going back to the alligators keeping their eyes on top, they also keep their nostrils on top. So even though they hold their breath when they go under the water and they can stand there for a really long time, they make sure that they put themselves in a position that no matter how deep they have to go into whatever they have to go into, that they're able to breathe. So just like alligator will, will alert you as a spirit animal that you, you can hold your breath longer, longer than you think, you'll know naturally when to come up for air. You can also position yourself where you never have to make that choice. You can just breathe all the time and your breathing will be even. If um, alligator is your totem animal, man, you are double tough stuff. And you are really into self-discovery. You're into knowing your past lives. You're into knowing your future lives. You're into the power of human performance. What can I accomplish it? How can I get there? Um, the power of motherhood, that is all you, baby. And you are... You are the alligator goddess, and that is a much, much revered energy. Good for you. Uh, if I need you for backup, I'll call you. If you're invoking alligator as your power animal, 
if you are aligning with that part of yourself that actually is the alligator, it's really about having the courage to reveal feelings, good, bad, or indifferent. Because you're dealing with the water element, you know, listen, alligators swim at 20 miles per hour, and they can move really quickly, too, on land. I want to, I could be wrong, I'm going to say it's almost like 50 miles an hour, but for only a very short time. But even though they, oh, excuse me, uh, maybe 11 miles an hour, I'd have to look that up, but 50 miles an hour, not true. Um, but they move fast. And they look clumsy on land, but they know what they're doing. But water is their element. It's really, really where they feel the most free to do what they want to do. Again, invoking alligator as your power animal, be, be very, very sure that you don't resort back to primordial ways of handling things unless it calls for it. Now, sometimes somebody just needs a really good clonk on the head. That's primordial. That's our reptile self. That's our reptile brain. The more evolved brain would be trying to reason it out, talk them out, but sometimes you really just got to give somebody either, you know, the proverbial whack upside the head or, or sometimes, you know, it can be a, you know, thwap them upside the head, but get their attention, snap them out of that fake, weird, unenlightened, whatever they're doing or saying or whatever. And be careful when you do that, because those thumps can be too much for people too soon. And while you can't be the determining factor of that, it's always, always better to speak from a place of love, which always means that you'll temper whatever you're about to say or do, at least a bit. And even if you have to tell, give them tough love or something has to come that's a little harder for them to hear, make sure that it comes from a little more enlightened place and not necessarily that more primordial, tougher place. It doesn't have to be that way. So I hope this has been helpful to you. That's a lot of heavy energy on a Sunday. But listen, what else are Sundays for other than the deep contemplation, connecting to your crown chakra, discovering all the mysteries of life and the other side, the universe? Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure to pick up your copy of the award-winning Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. You'll be glad you did. 100 animals in there for you to connect with. And all of that said, what's the most important thing? I say it every day. I'm going to say it every day till the end of time. To stay wild.